This weekend, I did my trip to Marfa, Texas. My buddy Eric and I went down there. We saw the Donald Judd Shinati Foundation. It was amazing. Now, I went out there with some very high aspirations of perhaps daily vlogging that and uploading videos while I was out there and kind of ran into two issues. First of all, it was a lot of stuff and we spent an enormous amount of time just taking it all in and enjoying the situation. And so that left very little time to edit. And secondly, the internet connection was absolutely horrendous. On my cell signal, I was lucky to have one bar and the Wi-Fi at the Airbnb was really bad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually put those together, edit them this week, and I'll release them towards the end of the week. That will happen long after I was there, but I do want to share that experience with you guys. I do want to give some thoughts on this today while it's fresh on my mind because there's a lot of things that kind of struck me, and they have a lot to do with some of the things we've been talking about on this channel in terms of how it relates to photography. I mentioned most of this in the last video, but Marfa, Texas is an extremely small town. It's a population of about 2,000. Most of the residents there are transplants, and they are there for the art community, whose centerpiece is the Chinati Foundation. Chinati is sort of an environmental museum, and I'll talk about what that means, but it also houses the works of Donald Judd as well as several other artists. Now, this was started by Donald Judd in the early 70s. He had a studio in New York and would travel the country and was looking for for a place that he could live in the summer, kind of a summer home. He ended up in 1971 buying a home in Marfa, Texas, fell in love with the place, and by the 80s, when the town was going through some financial trouble, started buying up properties to kind of help save the local community downtown. And so these properties he would either have an office in, they would do art installations in, other artists would move to Marfa and spend time there doing their own works, and thus it became a bit of an art community. This whole idea of an environmental exhibition space was Judd's idea, and in the 70s, he had become somewhat frustrated with the way that we encounter works of art in a museum. We go into this formal space that is the museum and culture is sort of presented to us. And so he was thinking in terms of what if we went beyond that and we created art that was supposed to be part of its environment. It's art that reacts with the environment. It belongs in the environment. It's inspired by the environment and it all works together. And this is sort of how Chinati came about. Chinati is in a space that was a former military site. And what's interesting is when Judd acquired this, what he did with it. So a lot of it was left intact. There are barracks still there. There are these artillery warehouses. There's even a former hospital. They've all been transformed into art installations now. So with a respect to the environment, they've created work that reacts within that environment with minimal alterations, depending on how you look at it. It is absolutely amazing. And I'm going to show you more of this when I get into the videos that recap what we did out there and a lot of the footage that I took out there. But this is what I want to talk about because this is really important and this is how it relates into the whole photography thing and what I try to communicate through these videos. First thought is that there was no photography allowed in a great portion of the tour. And at first that was a little bit of a bummer, but the more I got into it, the more I'm glad that that was not the case. You're dealing with works that are created that respond to an environment. And if you go in there with your face in the camera and you're shooting pictures and trying to get cool light and cool angles, you're not getting the experience of actually going in and being with these works of art. And that's really interesting because they're complex in a way. I know this is minimalism we're talking about, but for instance, one of the portions that was not, photography was not allowed on are these giant artillery sheds that you go in that have been transformed and they're full of 100 aluminum boxes and they're pretty big. And you go in there and at first glance, you're like, wow, a bunch of aluminum, it looks cool, it's a bunch of boxes, big deal, let's move on. And then you realize Judd's intentions. It's unpolished aluminum and each side of these boxes boxes reacts to the light that's coming into the windows. We're about halfway through the tour and the light shifted a little bit and everything looked different all of a sudden. And then you start to meditate and you go in a little further and you realize that there's it's not a theme in variations, but there are variations that make the piece as a whole. And you're seeing how those respond. So sometimes you have these open objects that you can see through. Other times they're closed off. Sometimes you walk up on one, you think it's open, and then you realize that the metal's there because the way the light's hitting. Anyway, my whole point is that your experience is so important in going through and seeing these 3D objects that taking photos on something like this is just a huge distraction and you have to become one with the art. And so believe it or not, I am always the first person who thinks it's complete antiquated BS when a museum or some kind of institution does not allow photography. In this instance, I actually support that. Now it makes it very hard for me to share this with you, but there are a million images online formerly that they've had taken of this space and I can talk about it with you. So that's what I'm gonna be doing in the videos that are coming up. But I actually appreciated that that was part of the experience as a whole 
whole because it allowed me to experience the work and not just go in to kind of photograph it and come up with something to share with you guys or on Instagram. It was much deeper than that. The second big takeaway for me was how does photography fit in with something like this? And when I go to see artwork and I'm inspired by something that's a slightly different medium, but yet it's still art, it's all the same. And I was trying to put together some thoughts on this today. And like one thing that kind of hit me, and I've talked a lot about this over the last couple months, but photography really in the last 15, 20 years has changed drastically. I think digital technology has a lot to do with that, the rise of the internet, we have social media. And so what is a photograph and what is that in relationship to how we interact with it? And as I mentioned many times, photography in the last 10, 15 years has become much more democratized than it's ever been. And I don't think that that's a bad thing. I think that that's interesting. I think it evolves. It kind of has a life of its own. But at the same time, there's an enormous amount of people out there that become, well, photography becomes part of what they're interested in doing. We create photos, but there's no understanding of any of the art movements or even photography movements that have become before us, how this influences, how it impacts what we do. And as I'm looking at things that are basically 3D sculptures and trying to think, how does this relate to what we do as photographers? And this whole idea of minimalism and how complex it ends up being and this whole idea of a work in an environment. What is our environment with images and how do we think about that? And what is the medium really? Because I think... On the one hand, you have a lot of people that it is a digital medium. It really kind of exists in theory, so to speak. It could be an Instagram post. It could be a file on the computer that we're working on in Lightroom. That's really where it lives. It lives in this digital domain. Maybe it gets posted. Maybe it's saved for private use. I think if you take it a step beyond that, there are those of us that still print work. And what is the objective there? Well, it's to put it on a wall or it's to exhibit it somehow. So whether that's in a formal gallery space or in your home, that's another way that we create that photography or we create art using photography to do that. But it's interesting being inspired by a lot of this environmental artwork that these are people that, and this happened, you know, in the 60s, 70s, 80s, it transcended what the object was. And if you look at the mediums that these guys worked in, Dan Flavin worked with fluorescent lights that was that was his brush that was his canvas he used commercially available at the time fluorescent lights judd varied his materials up but they're always very simple you have concrete works or you have aluminum works it's all very simple but the work is not about the medium or the material it's something that transcends this and this is something that i mean i'm going to do these videos on marfa but this is something that i think has influenced me and something that i want to start talking about over the next couple months and i hope this is not too out there too heady i definitely hope it's not art snobby but i think it's important for us to think about the intent of what we're producing as photographers we're in a very technical culture right now where cameras are coming out all the time and that's fine there's a place for that those things are fun. They're inspiring somehow as a photographer to sometimes use a new piece of equipment that enables you to do something you couldn't do before. I cover all those things too, but the bigger picture is to what end? To what means are we taking all of this? Like, what is the final output of our work? And that's something that I, I would like to see people think more about. And maybe it's not the masses, but maybe it's just me personally, or maybe it's just you who I'm talking to if you're into what I'm talking about. And I think that's the important thing to start thinking of. Anyway, I have more videos coming out. I'm going to recap a lot of the Marfa stuff. And um, I, I think Judd is just amazing. One thing I will share with you is this. Hold on a second. This is actually the Chinati Foundation newsletter and this caught my eye in the store because I know who did the photograph on the cover and you may know this one it's probably the more well-known of the two this was done by Laura Wilson and she's got a connection to this show because she was the first artist that I interviewed for the artist series and I think the world of Laura I think she's incredible she is probably the most famous for being the mother of Owen and Luke Wilson who went on to become famous actors but she was also one of Richard Avedon's assistants when he did the American West she was friends with Donald Judd I'm going to link up to that video at the end of this one, and I strongly recommend that if you haven't seen it, go check it out, because um, she and Judd both, I think they probably connected on this, but she has a strong respect as an artist in terms of what came before uh, in terms of photography, but also art, and how can you make intelligent decisions as a photographer? How can that inspire and inform you into the work that you're doing in the present and how that leads into the future? And I think that's a really important aspect that a lot of people just kind of brush off for whatever reason. Um, I haven't actually read this 
this yet and I want to sit down and do it because there's a whole essay that she wrote in here. She and Judd were both writers as well and they like to theoreticize about artwork and this whole idea of art philosophy kind of like what we're talking about here. They did it much better than me but I also want to hear from you so drop me a comment and let me know what you think. This is something that we're going to talk about as we move forward. I need to edit all my Marfa stuff. There's a ton of stuff. I've got drone footage. I've got vlog footage. I've got photographs. I got stills. It was an amazing trip and if you ever have a chance to go to West Texas it is an amazing place and so I will have all that edited and out later this week so sorry about the delay but I at least wanted to acknowledge that I did go on the trip and I made it back alive and it was a lot of fun and I got sunburned but it was amazing so anyway I will see you guys in the next video until then later Thank you.